Welcome to convergent and divergent sequences. So quick definition. Uh, if we have a sequence, uh, AM, uh, the limit, uh, or we say the limit of the sequence, is essentially the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n. Um, how we would usually define limits, just knowing that n only is running through the uh, counting numbers. Um, if the limit doesn't, it's possible for the limit to not exist, right? So uh, the limit may or may not exist. Just like limits of functions didn't may or may not exist. Um, another definition. Uh, we say that the sequence uh, a sub n converges if uh, the limit of a sub n exists. Otherwise, we say it diverges. So similar to limits just in general, it may go off to infinity. So again, uh, just like regular limits, um, it may go off to infinity or oscillate. in which case we say it's divergent. Um, because we're at infinity, there's no way to approach um, different numbers from opposite sides because we're just coming from one side. So quick theorem. Um, if um, there is a function Uh, f of x such that uh, f of n equals a sub n for all n. Then if the limit as uh, x goes to infinity of f of x equals l, and so does the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n equal l. Um, just a quick comment here. We actually don't need this to be true for all n. We just need this. We need the function to match a sub n for large n. Uh, just a quick note. 
this actually works. Uh, if uh, f of n equals a sub n uh, only for large n. Uh, as well. So since limits at infinity, only pay attention to really what's happening as we go to infinity. It doesn't matter if f of x doesn't match a sub n for small values, as long as they eventually match. So for example, let's consider the following sequences, uh, determine if they are convergent or uh, divergent. Um, if they diverge, oops. If they diverge, then no, sorry, I was supposed to say if they converge, not diverge. So if they converge, what is the limit? So in this first one, we have a sub n is uh, n squared minus seven over three n squared plus two n minus five. So note, um, we could use f of x equals x squared minus seven over three x squared plus two x minus five, right? Then we have uh, f of n is simply equal to a sub n. And the limit as x goes to infinity of x squared minus seven over three x squared plus two x minus five this limit is one third, right? We have matching degrees. So we just take the coefficients of the, or the leading coefficients from both the numerator and the denominator. So since this holds, then we have uh, the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n is equal to one third. Um, you do not need to write this as a function of f. You can just think of it as a function of n instead um, and go that way. That's perfectly fine. So if we have b sub n now is equal to sine of n. So uh, we can just think of this as a function of n. If we take the limit as n goes to infinity of sine of n, uh, sine oscillates forever, right? So this does not exist. And so, right, it's oscillating between negative one and one. anywhere between negative one and one. Um, so that means then that this is divergent or it divergence. Uh, next up, let's look at C sub n, uh, which is defined by negative one to the n times e to the negative n. So here, if we take the limit as n goes to infinity of C sub n, we are looking at the limit as n goes to infinity of negative one to the n times e to the negative n. e to the negative n goes to zero. And so our entire negative one to the n times that will go to zero. So this one converges as well. 
Um, so next up, we have what is known as the absolute value theorem. So this is a useful trick to have. The absolute value theorem states that if sorry, sorry about that. The absolute value theorem states that if um, the limit as the n goes to infinity of the absolute values of the a sub n's goes to zero. Uh, then the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n also goes to zero. So this could have been used in our previous limit so that we didn't have to worry about that negative one to the n. So note, we could have used this. or our c sub n. Um, essentially what this theorem is stating is whether or not a function is going positive and negative, as long as it heads to zero in absolute value in magnitude, it must head to zero just in general, right? So essentially what we're stating here, the top part is the a sub n's head to zero in magnitude. So they get closer and closer to zero as we get on, whether they're positive or negative, then the limit has to just go to zero in general. Um, so this is uh, another trick we have essentially for checking convergence. If we have that negative one to the n in front, we can ignore it as long as it's heading to zero. If it heads to something else, that negative one in front can add complications. <clears throat> 